Okay, so I have here the, um, the definition of a subring and the steps to show a subring. In, or, in other words, the, the steps to show a subring proof. And I took these directly from the last video. And um, in this video, I'm going to do an example. And uh, also, something I kind of forgot to mention, um, in, I guess technically, in order to show that one ring is a subring of another, you would technically need to show that it's a subset of that ring, although usually that's kind of given. It, it, it's, it's kind of just something that's obvious. The, the, usually the, the, the rings we select that we want to show are subrings, we usually select them because they are subsets, and it's, it's just usually kind of trivial to show it. So that's the reason I didn't mention that. So for this video, I'm going to show that the, uh, the set, uh, I'm going to call it S, the set uh, dot 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 uh, negative six negative three zero three six dot 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 I'm going to show that this is a ring and rather again rather than actually go through and prove um, all of the eight steps of um, a ring uh, rather than doing that we could actually just show that this is a sub ring of the integers we already showed that the integers um, do form a ring under normal addition and multiplication and so we can just we can just show this is a subring of the integers, and that, that itself will show that it is itself a ring because we said S is a ring. So the uh, the uh, notation for this would we would say that I mean once we get done proving this we would say that this is a subring of the integers, and that's usually denoted with a less than less than or equal to sign. Now rather than than dealing with um, this set of numbers here directly, we can really kind of give this set another name. Let's this see. This is equal. Oops. This is equal to um, the set of all three times m, such that m is an integer. These are the same things. If you take three and multiply it by every integer, you're going to get this set. And this is a lot nicer to deal with um, in a proof than this is. So let's actually go through this. And remember, there's four things here we need to show that this is a subring of z. We need to show closure under addition, closure under multiplication. We need to know whether or not the zero of the integers is also an element of this set. And we need to show that each set, I mean each element in this set, has its additive inverse also in this set. All right, so let's go ahead and show closure under addition. So closure under addition. So to show closure under addition, we need to take two things in this set, add them together under our operation addition, and we need to show that the that sum is also an element of this set. So first of all, let's take two arbitrary elements of this set. So let's say um, let uh, A and B be elements of, I'm calling this S, so S is this thing. Let A and B be elements of S. Well, what does it mean to be an element of S? Things in S look like this. So that means A and B also look like this. Three times some integer. So then A is equal to three times some integer. Let's say, let's call it R. Three times R. Oops, that's a bad R. Three times R. And B also is that form. So B equals three times some integer, although it may be different from this integer. So let's say three times s, little s. Man, that's a terrible s. There we go. It's a little better. And um, these are such that uh, r and s are integers. Okay, and now we want to add these together and show that their sum is still in here. In other words, their sum still looks like this. So then then a plus b, I can just use this substitution now. We can substitute 3 times r for a and 3 times s for b. So this is 3 times r plus 3 times s. And now again, we already said that any arbitrary subset of a ring is going to have the distributive property, regardless of which subset you choose. So we can use the distributive property here. So factor out this 3, essentially. 3 times r plus s. And 
now we said that r and s are both integers. We already know that the integers form a ring. r and s, this is r plus s, so the ring is, the integers are closed under addition, so r plus s is just another integer. And so this thing is 3 times some integer. Well, that's the exact requirement for being in s. So this thing is an element of s. So we just showed closure under addition. Let me scroll down a bit. We need to show closure under multiplication. Closure under multiplication. I'm going to use the same a and s that we used up here. So we want to know that a times b is an element of s. Well, a is 3 times r, and b is 3 times s right here. So this is times 3 times uh, s. Okay, now we also know that um, uh, the associative property holds, so we can just kind of uh, rearrange these parentheses here. So let's say that um, this is 3 times uh, r times 3 times s. r times 3 times s. These are all integers. We said r and s are both integers. The integers are closed under multiplication, so this thing is just one big integer. And again, we have, we have 3 times some integer. And again, that's the requirement for being an s, 3 times some integer. So this thing is an element of s. So we've shown closure under addition and closure under multiplication. We also need to show the, the additive identity is an element of the set. Identity. Identity. OK. So before we can do this, let's ask ourselves, what is the additive identity of z? Since we're showing this as a subring of z, we need to know what the additive identity of z is in order to show that it is actually in s. Well, the additive identity of z is just the integer 0. And so, so we need to show that 0 is an element of this set. Well, this is 3 times any integer. Um, 0 is an integer. So then 3 times 0 has to be an element of s by its very definition. 0 is an integer, and this is the set of all 3 times integer. So we can say that 3 times 0 is an element of this set. But as we know from a couple videos ago, um, 0 times any integer is just 0. So 0 is an element of s. Additive inverses. Inverses. OK, so let's, um, in order to show inverses, you need to pick some arbitrary element in your subset. And you need to know, you, you since this since s is a subset of z, you know that that integer that you pick is also an element of z. And z is a ring, so it has additive inverses. The question is whether or not its additive inverse is also in this set. So let's pick an arbitrary element. Let's say let uh, a be in s. And again, then we know that then a equals 3 times some integer. Let's call it r and r is an integer. And um, again, since we know s is a subset of z, we can say that um, then a is an element of z. And since z is a ring, this implies that there exists a, an additive inverse for a, let's call it negative a, uh, in z in z, uh, such that a plus the additive inverse of a is equal to the additive inverse of a plus a, and that's equal to our additive identity, which we said was 0. And the question is um, right here. We want to know if we know this is in z, but the question is whether or not this is in s. Let me scroll down. So we're going to use this information right here. So let's say that uh, we know a plus the additive inverse of a is equal to 0. Now, we already said that a is equal to 3 times r. So we can just directly make that substitution. 
So this tells us that 3 times r plus the additive inverse for a is equal to 0. Now, um, we can add the, the um, uh, this is an element of z. So every element of z has an additive inverse. So we can just add the additive inverse over here. Um, so we can say that uh, negative a, or the additive inverse of a, is equal to the additive inverse for 3 times r, whatever it may be. But now we know that um, based off of the properties of rings, we can just kind of, since this is all multiplication, we can move this negative around pretty much however we please. So let's say that negative a is equal to, let's bring the 3 out front, so 3 times the additive inverse for r. And again, r is an element of z, z is a ring, so the additive inverse for r is also an integer. And so we have the additive inverse of a is equal to 3 times some integer. And that is exactly, again, the requirement for being in s. So we have the additive inverse for a is an element of s. Okay, to wrap things up, we said that this um, this set here, I just kind of gave this to you, this set is closed under addition, with the same addition that's defined in z. It's closed under multiplication, again, the same multiplication that was defined in z. It has the identity that z has in it, and every element of it has an additive inverse also in the set. So we just proved that this is a subset, or a, sorry, a subring of z. And quick little note here, um, this set um, actually has a name. You could say this is um, 3 times the integers, because it really it is 3 times the integers. So we, we, it actually has a name. Rather than writing this out every time, we just write 3 times z, or 3z. And so I, I, I hope that, that clears things up for you in, in showing that one ring is a subring of some other ring.